Dear learners, welcome to NIOI Studio. Myself, Dr. Joshit VP from Central University of Kerala. Today, we will discuss about scientific thinking. Let us start from thinking. Thought comes from Old English fought or jifat, from stem of fenken to conceive of in the mind, consider. Thinking may mean mental activity, capacity to reason, imagine and so on, reflection on an idea, recollection, half formed or imperfect intention, consideration, attention, care or regard, judgment, opinion or belief, the ideas characteristic of a particular place, class or time, the state of being conscious of something, take place within human brain, tending to believe in something especially with less than full confidence, take place as part of living biological system, take place only at conscious level of awareness, requires language, is principally or even only conceptual, abstract, involve other concepts such as drawing analogies, interpreting, evaluating, imagining, planning and remembering. So, we will just see what are the different types of thinking that do we have. We have analytical thinking, concrete thinking, critical thinking, divergent thinking, convergent thinking, creative thinking, conceptual thinking, abstract thinking, sequential thinking and holistic thinking. Now, let us see how analytical thinking works. See, we have the characteristics like separate the whole into basic parts, examine each of the basic parts. Next, it follows certain steps. Now, we have concrete thinking, application of factual concepts. It is non-specific than general, thinking only to the surface, literal and to the point. Now we will go for critical thinking. Let us see what are the characteristics of critical thinking. Disciplined, systematic, type of judgment or a critic. It involves synthesis, evaluation, reflection and reconstruction. Now, the next one is convergent thinking. It is a process of finding the correct answer of a problem through predetermined steps, logical manner to find a single answer, focusing finite number of solutions. Now, we will go for divergent thinking. Let us just see what are the characteristics that divergent thinking has got. It is exploratory in way, contrasted with convergent thinking. Here, solving of problems are based on large number of solutions, bringing data and facts from various resources. Now, let us have creative thinking. Means, creating new and unique thoughts, thinking outside the box. You are having a box and you please go outside the limit of the box, it means creative. Now, we will be just going for conceptual thinking, means the identification of patterns and abstractions in information, that is concept nature. For example, you have some patterns, you have some ab abstractions, you just link 
what are the patterns and how sequentially it exists and you just make your abstractions to be clarified that becomes conceptual in nature. Now, we have another thing that is known as abstract thinking. See here, we use concepts to make and understand generalization. How we use concepts? We use concepts relating and connecting the concepts. Means, very different concepts are connected sequentially and these connected concepts are used in abstract nature so that it becomes abstract thinking. Now, we have sequential thinking. It is the ability to process information in orderly prescribed manner. Now, see it is a step by step process means it is sequential in nature. The response of each step will lead to the next step. Now, we go for the final one which is holistic thinking means considering a big picture of information means you are not just concentrating on a very small part. You are not concentrating anything which is very concrete. You have a very big area or we just say that it is a very big picture where you are concentrating. Then recognizing the interconnectedness of each and every components helps to expand the thought process in multiple directions where you are having many different directions where your thinking goes. This is what that is happening in holistic thinking. Now, just see we want to go for scientific thinking. Let us just think what is science? The word science originated from the Latin word scientia which means knowledge. Science is a systemized body of knowledge. Science has been defined in different fashions. It is a method of inquiry and a way of investigation. Science is dynamic in nature. The scientific approach also changed with time. We have the different approaches of science like traditional approach and modern approach. See in every discipline, when innovation scheme, when technology just influences the thing, then there will be some differences between the traditional one and the novel one which normally we call it as modern. Similar way, science is also we have a traditional approach to science where our thinking matters to different dimensions and we have the modern approach to science where our thinking matters to new dimensions sticking on to the sticking on to the nature of technology because technology just steers the thing. Now, we just see what is the nature of traditional approach. Science is viewed as already discovered knowledge. This is what traditional approach says. Teacher viewed as authority. Teacher is the final. Teacher can be treated as the authority of knowledge. Now, how does the study goes? Areas of study are set by the teacher. Again, it is the teacher decides. Large group of instructions are carried and large number of investigations are carried when we just perceive science in traditional nature. Now, evaluation is based on right answers, means teachers always need only right answers. Content not connected to children's experiences. Maybe in the previous time, when scientific thinking or science matters to majority of the people, we just have a situation where we are learning something we do not have anything to go on because we are really learning something which we do not know. 
So when child is considered, many of the things that child learn is a new knowledge to the child. Next, the predetermined parameters around areas of study. So in each and every area, we have some parameters and we just concentrate on that parameters which we are going to study. Now, the prescribed ways to collect and record data. So, traditional thing, traditional form of inquiry, traditional form says these are the prescribed methods so that you can collect the data and these are only the methods by which you record the data because we have lot of limitations on that time. Now, science is viewed as a separate area of curriculum. See, for every aspect of thing, whether you teach language, whether you teach social science, whether you teach any other discipline, you need science. Because science just make you, science just make you the people to have a systematic way of knowledge or to comprehend a systematic body of knowledge. So, science cannot be treated as a separate one, which we can just deal it as a disciplinary one, but it should be with each and every realm of study. Now, see what in modern approach. In modern approach, science is viewed as an active exploration. So, whatever you explore, whatever you find out, Whatever you just say, this is a part of something that you have just found out, means this is novel and that is a science. Teacher is viewed as facilitator. This means the role of teacher is not decreasing, but the role of teacher is increasing. Again, the role of teacher is increasing in such a way that he keeps everything for learning. He just generate everything for learning. He just arrange the scene for learning. And more than the teacher which we view early, the role of teacher has increased. Now, the area of study set by the child's interest. Again, previously we have predetermined areas where traditional science has says these are your areas where you want to explore. But the modern science say the area can be changed whenever you come across something where you cannot move forward, whenever you have a problem in between. And the area is set according to the interest of the child. Now, individual and small group investigation. Previously, the investigations were very large. And it requires lot of time, it requires lot of space. Now, you have an individual investigation which can be possible. At the same time, you have small group investigation collaborating others which is also possible. Evaluation based on multiple criteria. Content connected to children's learning experiences. Content of study are open-ended. Now, see again, as a process of scientific thinking or as a process of scientific data collection, we have here multiple ways to collect data and there are many different ways to record data. Even each and every moment can be recorded because technology has reached to such a standard so that you can record everything. Now, science integrated with other curricular areas rather than science treating as a separate discipline. Now, for each and every discipline, each and every realm of study which we call, we can call it as which is one integrated with science. Now, see, we will see what is scientific thinking. Just we have a formal definition of scientific thinking where Scientific thinking is that mode of thinking about any scientific subject, content or problem in which the thinker improves the quality of his or her thinking by 
skillfully taking change of the structures inherent in thinking and imposing intellectual standards upon them. Now, let us see what are the characteristics of scientific thinking. Just we have curiosity, creativity, open mindedness, scepticism, awareness of bias, honesty, ethics, intuition and conceptualization. See each and every one you have curiosity because people are curious, people are creative, people are open minded means they are not biased, they are septic, they never go for prejudices, they will be honesty or they have honesty in their sayings, in their observations, in their reporting, they keep ethics because they have some standard. They just give importance to their intuitions and they conceptualize what they see, what they perceive and what they just experience. Now, we just see what are the advantages of scientific thinking. A well cultivated scientific thinker raises vital scientific questions and problems formulating them clearly and precisely means you have many different questions, you have many different problems. So, you just start asking the questions, each and every questions which intrigue in your mind. Just pause the question, pause it as a problem. Now, what do you want to do? You want to formulate them. How do you formulate? you formulate very clearly and precisely. Now, gathers and assesses relevant scientific data and information. How you gather information, how you assess information means you will be assessing information using abstract ideas to interpret them effectively. So, again the ideas which just come into our mind will not be contrary. They are raw ideas, they are not refined, they can call it as abstract because you do not know where it started or where it will be ending and all these things where you have got some problems of clarity means you are not going to define it, you cannot define it, but you have this problem in your mind and you feel it as a problem and this is an idea which we can call it as an abstract idea which generate as a part of scientific thinking. Now, what is our role? We need to interpret them effectively. You just find a solution, you just find the meaning, you just find how it works. Now, see, we will come to a well reasoned scientific conclusions and solutions. How we will come as a part of scientific thinking? Because we will test them. How we will be testing? All our abstract ideas will be tested. How you will be testing? You will be testing them against a certain criteria. How do you set the criteria? We will have the criteria. We will have some standards. Keeping the criteria, keeping the standards, we will test one by one. And this generates as a process of scientific thinking. Now, we can think open mindedly within the convergent systems of scientific thought means our thinking is in general or away from biases, away from prejudices and we are ready to receive anything, we are ready to respond to anything based on our intuitions, 
we can recognize each and every importance, we can recognize the scientific assumptions, we can assess specific things, we just understand what is the implications and as a part of scientific thinking, you will be very much aware about the practical consequences. So, see again, this is not a simple task of thinking that we do in our normal process of life. This is a type of thinking where science has caught hold of you on each and every spectrum means whatever you do, whatever you respond will be based on science. You can recognize each and every elements, you can just go for specific assumptions. Again, as I have told, you understand each and every implications of your work. At the same time, you can understand the practical consequences also. Now, how do you communicate? We communicate effectively with others in proposing solutions to complex scientific problems. As we know, each and every problem has got its own complexity. And as a person, we cannot simply go and solve a problem because solution of a problem needs a systematic procedure and when you can solve a problem in group or as a person, the first and foremost thing that you want to do is you need to communicate it effectively because every complex scientific problems are to be communicated very well. This is a thing now we need to understand. Now see, what are the elements of scientific thinking? We have scientific point of view where we keep frame of reference, perspective and orientation. We have the purpose of scientific thinking like goals, objective and function. We have scientific question at issue means what is your problem, what is your issue, how you can just coin an issue and whether the problem is issue based means it has got some concerns with the common public, it has got some concerns with the child. So, this is what we need to see, fix first. Now, scientific information we need to collect. How do you collect? You collect through data, you collect through facts, you collect through evidences, you collect through observations, your experiences and reasons. Now, scientific interpretation and inferences. Here, we just go for conclusions, we just go for solutions, all these things which will come when we interpret a thing. Now see, what are the things just we need before going for all these things? We need to understand some assumptions. What are our presuppositions? What are our axioms? What is taken for granted? We need to have some concepts, means like theories, definitions, laws, principles, models, etc. Now see, what will be our scientific implications and consequences? Means the something which follows logically and what the result says. Means what the result says for the public or what the results just make for science. That is what we need to understand. Now see the different steps that we are having. Steps of scientific thinking. Observing means Scientists make observations and examine prior to research. Forming hypothesis means scientists ask questions and try to explain observations. Testing hypothesis means scientists collect data and they use to support or reject a hypothesis. Now, analyzing data, what scientists do? Scientists analyze their data that they have collected to draw conclusions about their research. Finally, we will be evaluating our results. 
here scientists evaluate the data and conclusions presented by other scientists. So, all these steps which will come in sequence like one follow the other and we will not stop at any point because we will be continuing because each and every step is very important. Now, just see the difference between scientific thinking and critical thinking. When we use the methods and principles of scientific thinking in different activities in everyday life, we practice critical thinking. Critical thinking gives you reliable knowledge about all the aspects of life and society and is not restricted to the formal study of science. Scientific thinking is always practiced by scientists. On the other hand, critical thinking is used by the humans in all walks of life. Scientific method has proven to be the most reliable and successful method of thinking. So, I hope that we have a nice time regard to scientific thinking. We just have seen scientific thinking on many other thinking by just treating with it with many other thinking. And we have seen the characteristics, we have seen the types, we have seen the methods of scientific thinking. So, before we conclude, just once again I tell you, scientific thinking is an important part of thinking in each and every walks of our life. Thank you.